to the ball. That's Raul Jones, Warren Jones, for me of count, Nathan Burke to Russell Jeffrey. Up to Lockett. Out he comes. He's got it. To Gox. Gox on the right foot. A quick start. He goes. Oh, well dodged by Dean Rice. Mature beyond his years. High climb by White, but he couldn't take the mark. Windmar with his skills at ground level. Puts it wide to Lockett. Great football. Tony Lockett. Burst back to form last week with seven goals. Lining up for his first today. He's got it. Looks like Brett Lovett. He's had an outstanding season. Oh, the loose man is Jackson. He's clear. 35 metres out. Ricky Jackson fires a goal. It could be another one. It is. <laughs> They've got it over the wing now. Coglin ducks a high tackle. Gets the hand pass away to Corker Mealis. He's still got it, Spiro. Up towards full forward. Lock it one out. And the Saints lead by seven points. No. Going across to the youngster Daniels. Two kicks to goal from there. Lock it and low. Winmar. Great snap. Oh, close. Up the middle of the ground is the best place to go. Too far out to score. Lowe's there. Off hands to Nixon. Good hook. 39 VFL games. He, this will really bring the house down if he kicks it. Won't make the dis distance. It's still in play, is it? There's a snap by Cudlin. He's kicked it. Towards the half foot line, Winmar cleverly waits over the back and nearly came his way too. Oh, hand pass comes straight to Coughlin. Lockett in front of Campbell. Oh, great play, Lockett. A blind turn. He straightens up. Bang, that's a goal for his fourth. Melbourne have just made a change. Sharon off and number 37, David Flintoff on the field. Wasn't even named. Here's Wilson. Goes for goal himself. Nobody back there. It bounces. Ford pocket. Oh, free kick to Jones. No. Road, a quick kick. Bailey, left foot. Fires. Could be another one to Melbourne. Yes. Well, the Saints lived up to their reputation at Moorabbin and outscored the, the league leaders by 13 points in the first quarter with Tony Lockett getting three for the first term. And they outscored them again in the second quarter to lead by 17 points at half time. Still a lot to do in the heavy conditions at Moorabbin. Well, we pick up the action for the bulk of our replay at the start of the third quarter. Start of the second half here at Moorabbin. And St Kilda first away. Spinning through was Rice. Up towards Lockett. Not quite. Socket away from him. Comes to Coglin. Good smother by White. Who did well on Lockett in the first case. White back to half forward for Melbourne. Oh, Rice. What a clever mark. Ooh. And yeah, that was close. could have cleaned him up if he wanted to. Exactly. I think he deliberately missed him. Then there's the mark for the nice drop ball was taken by Lowe. Lowe to Alfredson. Sets it up again for Lockett at the back. Yes. Just a slight little nudge. Not enough for the umpire. So he just actually lent into him, Bernie, didn't he? He did well there, Tony Lockett, because he made as if he was going to lead. There's the kick from Alphamstone. Lockett looked as if he was going to lead. Sean White went forward. Lockett dropped back and took an easy mark. Well, what a tremendous start this will be for the Saints to start the third quarter. 17 points in front. This will take them to 23 points. Lockett. Goal number five. And he's kicked it. There's five goals out of nine. It's a tremendous performance on the forward line by Tony Lockett. Big, strong player. I wouldn't say he's the main difference between the two sides because of the rest of the St Kilda team have really put in today. And Melbourne have been under extreme pressure right from the start. St Kilda with Bob Jones and Evans on the bench. They've been there all the game. John Northey with his worries. 60 to 37 after the Saints got first blood in the second half. Corker Mealis out of the middle. Chance for Lockett again. White has the front position. Lockett applies the tackle. Coglin. Well, he's done some magnificent things, Frank Coglin. And the ball out about 55 metres from goal. I agree with you, uh, Drew. I think Coglin's been a great player, but they've had plenty. Guys like Ricky Nixon really put in. Young Jeffrey across the half-back line. There's Phoebe. 
you'll be used to these conditions coming from Tasmania. Ricky Jackson's been a quiet player. I think he really needs, uh, Ricky's only a small man, he, he needs it, the ball to be bouncing and running for him, I think, Bernie. Probably appreciate the drier conditions much more than these, Peter. Centre wing, Oda Wire, oh gee, cop one across the shoulder. And Warren Jones has beaten Oda Wire and Steins in the ruck today. Not a bad effort. Oh, shocking kick. We went about 15 metres. As we see Ricky Jackson onto the left foot, they want a couple of goals and they want them quickly. Campbell loses it to Muller. Muller, a long left foot kick, fisted away by Steins. Nathan Burke's been an excellent player. To Ricky Nixon, handballs it away. Bailey was legged. Play on, said the umpire. Winmar with a high floater. Low and lock it. Sean White, badly outnumbered, but he fought on well. There he goes again, Sean White. Tremendous play as he kicks it to the boundary line and in fact puts it over. Yes, that goal he conceded uh, early in the quarter was the first he'd given Lockett, because Lockett had four before Sean White went back on him. Another chance here for the Saints. Comes down to Corker Mealis. He's buried in the tackle. Socket away by Sharon. Oh, kept in by Lowe. Clever play. O'Dwyer goes to thump. Oh, Lowe. Ugly looking tackle, but uh, no whistle on that, and there'll be a boundary throwing. Half forward flank for St Kilda. They've started off this quarter very, very well. Stuart Lowe doing the ruck work on the forward line today. There's Daniels, who's been a good player, kicked away by Steins, and again it's over the line. Sixty plays thirty-seven, so that's twenty-three points the difference. Again, low to do the ruck work, but O'Dwyer got it out. Winmar, ah, oh, good skills by Winmar. Ducks the head, handball, play on. Nixon's in there after it. So are Steins, and uh, an absolute stalemate at centre half forward for the Saints. Umpire Peter Cameron will bounce it. Forty metres from St Kilda's goal. O'Dwyer wins the tap. Coglin, there he goes again. Loses it this time. Love it. Johnson runs onto the bouncing ball. Confronted by Grant, who interestingly has played the entire game and has a, has a clean sheet. Hasn't had a touch. He'll be saying in the showers after the game about all his knock-ons and tap-outs and all that sort of thing, I think. We see Yates. Oh, he was looking for Johnson. You know, they've gone in very, very hard today, St Kilda. An entertaining game. Enormous pressure put on Melbourne today. Top side. They are a much better side, I think, when the ball is bouncing for them under dry conditions. Jones again got that one out, but Lovell sharked it. Anthony Lovell. Good mark to... Uh, well, did he take it? I didn't quite hold it long enough, said Peter Cameron. That was Alan Johnson. And the throw-in will take place on centre wing. 9-6 to 5 goals, 7. Just under 20 minutes remaining in the third quarter. Jones superb against the two-prong ruck attack. Dwyer gets it forward. Sheldon further afield. Winmar tried to scoop it up one-handed. That time he left it behind. Love it. Bailey. Oh, that's beautiful play. Here goes Daniels again. To Lowe. To Dwyer. St Kilda looking a million dollars. High for Lockett. He's got a chance. Back goes White. Oh, well played, Sean White. Well, the St Kilda crowd doing the block drew because of the early one in the first quarter when they gave it against Ken Sheldon. Yeah, no other option there for Sean White. The umpire was correct in that decision. Great play by Sean White, too. And, uh, oh, he's had a... Oh, that's a good tackle, too. Here's a chance. Lock it for goal number six. Picks it up. Hooks it back, but misses. But Dean Sharon's had a dirty day, Bernie. Yes, and that's Tony Lockett's first miss. Kick five goals, one. So he's been right on target. Well, four goals the difference. Brett Lovett. Sean White. It'll be a terrific duel, that. Sean White against Tony Lockett. Stephen O'Dwyer. Back to White. White backs his judgment all the time to Newport. Centre of the ground. This looks better for Melbourne. It's twisted away, though, and they're at the base of the packs all the time. Mark DeWire. Sheldon's been excellent. Long driving kick. It's all Melbourne, though. 
Flintoff doing the show, it's Bailey doing the shipping, but oh, it's too good. Great play by Nathan Burke. And gee, he's had a fine game, Nathan Burke. And wow. the St Kilda crowd loving it down here. The desperation that's been shown by this young St Kilda side has been great to watch. Low against O'Dwyer. Comes to Corker Mealis. Threads out the hand pass. Nixon gets clear. Snap and goal. All new Nissan Patrol, the most advanced four-wheel drive down under. It makes all other four-wheel drives seem primitive. With Go Anywhere Patrol's all-new four-coil suspension, you get the handling and ride comfort of the car. Patrol's powerful 4.2-litre diesel or petrol sixes leave all other four-wheel drives back in the stone age. All-new Patrol. Already it's Australia's 4x4 of the year. That's Nissan know-how, building the right vehicles for Australia. To be a decathlon champion, you need to be versatile and very good. Similarly, the NEC Hi-Fi Stereo VCR offers all the top performance features, such as full function remote control, clear picture freeze frame, superb Hi-Fi Stereo, and on-screen displays. The NEC Hi-Fi Stereo VCR, above the rest by a long, long way. It's another top performer from NEC. In even the cleanest house, bacteria breed. Luckily, there's a sensitive instrument that tells us where. It's called the human nose. You see, bacteria cause most household smells. Smells air fresheners only cover up. But disinfectant Glen 20 kills bacteria, and that kills smells for good. So trust your nose and Glen 20. Glen 20 kills the bacteria that cause the smells. These cricket uh, thingies are used for all sorts of things, but mainly for lighting uh, whatchamacallins we can't show here. Oh, well, at least you've seen the light. Cricket um, thingies. If you need a locksmith, do what I do. Use the Melbourne Big. It's much faster. Hmm? The Melbourne Big. The buying guide Melbourne into turning to. Monday on a country practice. What do you reckon? I reckon it sounds all right. A one-night stand turns into one long nightmare. Where have you been all night? When an unfaithful husband spends the night with a lonely girl. I want to see you. We have to sort some things out. No one can imagine the frightening outcome. Where's Becky? Out in the brand. No, she's not. The betrayed wife, the guilty husband, the innocent child, all fall victim to the lonely girl. You're mine now, Jeff. A country practice. 7.30, Monday and Tuesday on 7. Jones has been tremendous. Mark DeWire's played well too. Out to Daniels. They've hardly had a weak link. Gotch. Terrific skills, Gotch. To DeWire. The leader's on. Lock it. Couldn't pick it up. Bailey. They're under enormous pressure. Melbourne. Newport. Right out wide. Jeffries has been excellent in defence. He caught one in the back. Yes, and umpire Peter Cameron saw that one. And Russell Jeffrey takes the kick right on the centre wing area. Comes up limping to centre half forward. Low is there. Stretch at the back for Melbourne. Across the half back line to Phoebe. Pokes over the little pass to the top. Lovell. Met by Elphinstone. Loses it. Burke to Nixon, who kicked the last goal. Off the left hand, just as good as the right. Oh, clever play by Rice. Beautiful play, Dean Rice. Comes to the back. All Melbourne at ground level. Stretch again. White. Past Sharon it goes. And out of bounds. That was fantastic play by Sean White. Just before he kicked that, he had a quick look to see where Lockett was, to see if he had him covered. And then he sent it round the boundary line. There's in the back. Or being held one of the two by umpire Mike Ball. Says it's to Stephen O'Dwyer. They've lowered their colours today, the big blokes for Melbourne. Warren Jones. Who's Done well. That's a good mark for Porter Mealers. Gee, they're hard to beat down here, the Saints. Porter Mealers with a long driving torp. In front again was Sean White. Alan Johnson comes in to lend a hand. He brings it out wide. Dean Rice ducks back to take the mark. Rice thumps it up to the forward line again. All St Kilda. Daniels dropped it that time. Lovell took a long time. 
Daniels comes out with it. Well played, son. Off the ground, Coglin. Wide to Corker Mealis. He heads inboard, shrugs a tackle. Oh, what a pickup that was by Lovett. And then he kicked it into the crowd. Well, bad luck. Magnificent pickup. Well, that's all been caught by the pressure that's being applied by St Kilda. Their tackling's been tremendous right from the start. Nathan Burke. Odawire takes front position. They're battling manfully down there, that Melbourne defence. They're under all sorts of pressure, but they're doing the job pretty well. St Kilda are doing all the attacking. They've hardly seen it up on their forward line, Melbourne. There's Graham Yates. A quick kick. Mark DeWire's there. Grant has doing the shepherding. Oh, caught. That's holding the ball. No. Well, I thought that was a good tackle, that, by uh, Brian Wilson. Held to him, I think, Peter. And in the end, he took it off him. Well, five goals, the difference, and it'll be hard to catch, Drew. Certainly will, midway through the third quarter. Jones sharing the rucking now with Lowe, depending where the ball is. Sheldon's been excellent. Back pocket, that's his go. The centre-half ball with Lowe. Lock it one out with White. The kick's too wide for him. Sharon uncontested. Then Sharon breaks away. Oh, the kick a mile away from O'Dwyer. He did pretty well to get there and keep it in. Gotch against O'Dwyer. That's David and Goliath. Flintoff. Good pick up Jackson. Round the outer boundary line. Contested centre wing. Crumbs come to Steins. Measures off the pass to centre half forward. Wilson with Grant. Free kick should have been to Grant. Wilson was right over the top of him. Well, David Grant still hasn't had a kick or a handball. But he's covered his man, and that's the important thing. In defence, hurry kick was by line. Oh, Jeffrey's been excellent to Coughlin. So has he. They've had some great players. Here they come again, the Saints. The long kick, the win mark. Yes. Oh, brilliant mark. I thought he'd lost it for a moment, but he grabbed it. Now, he is certainly within kicking distance. Nicky Winmar will have to kick from about 45 metres. Condition slippery. No, he kicks from 50, actually. And it's a nice-looking drop pump. Beautiful-looking kick. It's a goal. Nicky Winmar's second goal. And St Kilda go further ahead. Kick the first three goals in this third quarter. They are kicking with a slight breeze. But look at this mark by Winmar. Looked as if it had got away from him, but showing great pace to get there. And he's an exciting player to watch, Nicky Winmar. Look at that kick from 50. He's 50 metres. A good 60. St Kilda on the rampage at the moment. O'Dwyer in the middle. Love it. He's tried all day for Melbourne. Been a good player. He gets the free kick. Brett Lovett from just behind the centre circle up towards half forward. Sheldon well placed again. And over the back Flintoff, no mark. Stretch up on the forward line to Wilson. Now to Jackson. They haven't been inside half forward this quarter yet, Melbourne. Steers the pass for Lyon. No whistle on that. No mark. Oh, it comes out now. Lovell goes the short pass to Williams. Moves to full forward for the second time in the game. And it's the first time in about 14 minutes it's been anywhere near him in this quarter. And now a chance for Melbourne's first score for the turn. David Williams. Looking for his first goal for the day. He kicks well right through the middle. The phone bill? I thought you were going to pay that out of your cheque account. Well, there's no money left in it. Well, use the other one. No, I can't touch that for about another month. But it's your money, Ralph. Yes, but then the interest... Yeah, but it's still it. your money. When the State Bank launched the state banking system, it put 400,000 Victorians back in control of their money. Well, let's pull some out of your interest-bearing deposit. If you're still out of control, come and see us. You've got to wait 90 days for that one. So what were you saying about your money? At Budget, we have a clean record. Our management personally makes sure of it. So if your budget card doesn't meet budget standards, we'll sweep clean by giving you $10 off your rental. 
Braun Morning Report. What do men who shave daily think about Braun electric shavers? Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Did you shave this morning? Well, of course I did. Uh, would you like to try it again with this Braun shaver? Cool. Is he that bad? <laughs> <laughs> right now? Uh, yes. Well, sure. Feels okay. Let's check the results. Well, that's fantastic. When you think you've had a close shave, Braun shaves you closer. <laughs> well, it works, doesn't it? <laughs> Ignition, fuel, runway clear, tracked on. Wild to tower, tracked on power. <laughs> so there's this man professor on a motorbike. Anyway, what is this? Chicken. G'day. <laughs> smells great. So the prof says, physics old chocolate. <laughs> G'day again. So this guy turns around. She's right. Mate. And as he gets back on the bike. <laughs> say no to drink driving. In the limitless void of outer space, six men and women on the most thrilling rescue mission in history make a discovery that will shock the world. They'll face dangers undreamed of outside from an intelligence far greater than theirs, within from a rogue computer plotting their deaths. NEC presents Roy Scheider in 2010 for the first time on television, Sunday on 7. Goals the difference. Campbell's been moved to centre half back and Steins to centre half forward. So they've got problems in key positions, Melbourne. Yates looking for Flintoff, former Hawthorne player David Flintoff. Took he had a stretch in South Australia. Oh, young Daniels again, Jason Daniels to Porco Melas. Here come the Saints. Lockett leads. Sean White, far too wide for both of them, and it beats them all over the line in that forward pocket. Now Lockett might get back no he's letting low do the ruck work so they've got plenty of heights and kilda on their forward line with low and lock it they can help warren jones out jones doesn't come down the forward line at all at the moment he's hanging around the center wing and forming a decent wall nixon melbourne through sharon to ricky jackson oh it's a bit dangerous to bounce it today but he hooks it back little bradley gotch is there a hand pass was meant for Daniel. Flintoff trying very, very hard. Lion to stretch. Stretch to centre wing. And there was Warren Jones, as I said, just waiting there for it. Steins. Out it comes. And that was Sharon with a kick up towards half forward, but it's all St Kilda. Oh, and what a pickup that was by Jeffrey. And a centering pass to Burke. Away go the Saints again. Down the centre corridor, but the kick missed wire. Picked up by Campbell. Off to Steins. Now Melbourne a chance to counteract, a counter attack. Phoebe back to Campbell. Campbell up towards half forward. Oh, Williams stayed at the back, out marked by Frawley. In fact, Williams might have nudged him into the mark. <laughs> yes, his idea was right, it just didn't nudge him hard enough. There's Warren Jones, who's been very, very good. And outstanding game last week, too. Muller has found a niche. Warren Jones, oh, brilliant play by the big fella back it went to Muller and out wide and uh, I think Warren Jones will be talking about that one all night the handball on the ground Bernie well he received it when he was sitting down <laughs> on the ground <laughs> I thought you were supposed to hand pass to a bloke showing your movement <laughs> low against O'Dwyer bit of wrestling there and the free kick goes to O'Dwyer Stuart Lowe not too impressed with the decision O'Dwyer's kick wide to the wing to Steins for about the first time in the day, we've seen one ruckman to the other. Steins keeps it a bit too low. Kick smothered by Daniels. He'll get votes today, that Daniels. And the ball goes out of play at half forward. <laughs> and uh, the fellows who are alongside me, who are in charge of giving the votes, just gave me the big no. That he won't. <laughs> He'll get his a chance. Oh, he's, he's played uh, superbly, and I'll just—he's had 13 kicks, seven hand passes. Well, I've changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's O'Dwyer, but he would be just about in the votes, but they've just got so many good players. St Kilda's going to be very difficult. There's Lowe receiving a free kick. And it should be 50 metres. It should be. As O'Dwyer's belted that ball after the free kick was paid. Now, Stuart Lowe, half forward, brings it, lock it. Yes! 
Now, I don't know what happened to Sean White. He didn't even go with Lockett. Stephen Odoi turned around to see where Sean White was and uh, then didn't even go for it himself. So he really marked that uncontested. Well, Lockett led into the right place again. Up the centre of the ground. And maybe Sean White thought that Odoi was going to do the work for him, but he just couldn't get there in time. Well, no doubt about Lockett. He is a fantastic player. Like Dunstall. They know when to lead and they know where to lead. And that's important if you're going to be a full forward. As I said earlier, Warwick Kappa last night was leading to the wrong spots against Essendon. Now right in front is Luckett. He kicks it. Long is it in. Yes, it's a goal. Six goals for Tony Luckett. A little bit of a fight on in the centre of the ground there too. Stephen O'Dwyer and Lowe have been contesting very hard in those boundary throw-ins in St Kilda's forward line. Dwyer's not too happy about things at the moment. He was very fortunate he didn't get a 50-metre penalty paid against him. The umpire should have paid it. He got away with it, but uh, here's a free kick. Stuart Lowe took it down the centre of the ground. That's the right place to lead. And Tony Lockett too big and too strong for those Melbourne defenders. electric again. St Kilda by 36 points. Dwyer. High to half forward. Lock at a chance. Shrugs off White. Gave away the free kick. Well, I'll tell you how confident St Kilda are. They haven't even used their interchange yet, Drew. No. White towards the outer wing. Love it after this one. Hand pass floats a little bit, making it a bit hard for stretch. Close to the line, Steins. Good mark. Well, Melbourne really needing something. Their only previous loss this season was to Essendon. They look like going under the, to the 12th team on the ladder. Oh, it comes out the back here, luckily to Road. Nobody in front of him, but his kick misses everything by a long way. He bounces out, out of bounds about 10 metres from the behind post. Well, they've really been beaten just about everywhere today, Melbourne. St Kilda will look far more dangerous in attack with Lowe and Lockett doing well. Here's a chance for Steins. Lyon picks it up, has a quick snap, and puts it out of bounds on the fall. Now, a big asset to have two good key forwards, and they've got them, St Kilda, and both take a big mark. Sheldon has been outstanding. Oh, he played on then, Oda Wire. Bad play because that's allowed Dwyer to receive from Coughlin. Out comes Sean White. He trips over. Still got it, White. Good play. He gives it to Bailey. And Bailey transfers play. Centre wing was Phoebe. Number 34 is Newport. Warren Jones can't take the mark. At the back of the pack. Stein. Oh, good play by Crawley. And Crawley's hand pass goes out, 10 metres up the ground. Well played, Danny Crawley. Another standing ovation. Saints fans with plenty to yell out here today. I don't know how many of them travelled down to Geelong last week to see that great victory down there, but they've turned up here today and are having a great time. A full run over the line by Johnson. And the St Kilda players getting an ovation for uh, just smothers and tackles, not even possessions. Jones against Steins. Jones wins. Interference to uh, Rao Jones. And he gets the free kick. And they roar again for the free kick. Oh, big Warren Jones has become a bit of a cult hero down here at Moorabbin. And, uh, well, he's got a huge heart, Warren Jones. There's Stretch. Certainly like the drier conditions at Melbourne. There's Lovell. A floating kick towards half forward. They've fallen down in attack. There's Flintoff topping one in the back. Play on, said the umpire. David Williams and Frawley too strong. Frawley. There's a player pouncing on top of it. It's about 30 metres out from the Melbourne goal. He didn't yes, do much. It. No, he trapped it under him. I thought he may have been a little bit lucky not to have the free kick paid against him for holding the ball there, Danny Frawley. But tremendous desperation to keep in touch with that play. Melbourne have had just one score for the quarter. That was a goal. Here's another chance for them. St Kilda desperate again. Sheldon gets boot to ball. He lost ground with a kick, but he's found touch.
throw in in the forward pocket we have just under five minutes remaining in the third quarter a big lead to the Saints Gin Jones manfully working there there's a little Bradley got Sheldon has been magnificent in defense long kick which way will it bounce Burke shoves his opponent out of the way it was Sharon still on that half forward line oh they've got good players everywhere Dean Rice he was looking for DeWire low oh gee took his eye off the ball and ran straight at little level it's a free kick to level well Stuart Lowe missed him. Should have went along with that kick, Rice. There it is on centre wing with Newport. They're under, they just don't look like scoring goals at the moment. And there's a bad kick there, but no system at all, Melbourne. Jeffrey receiving from Cork Amelis. Towards half forward, the kick goes. Yates knocks it on to Campbell. Campbell to Love it. Love it to Sean White, who leads Lockett and runs right up the ground. Good play by White. Now, two on one here. They should be able to do something here as David Williams. Picks up, oh, kicked it straight up in the air. Steins, nearly a good mark to Steins. It's at centre half four and it'll be a bouncer. And Daryl Bulldog has used the interchange bench for the first time at the 24 minute mark of the third quarter. Warren Jones off and Bob Jones on. And Warren Jones has done a superb job. Steins wins. But he gave it straight to Grant, who gets his first possession for the day. Out to Elphinstone, up towards centre-half forward, through low it goes. Nixon at the back, open goal coming up. He kicked it. Yes, that's Ricky Nixon's third goal to this quarter. He's been a superb player for the St Kilda side this afternoon. And that's a way to play in condition, conditions such as this. A long kick down in that forward line. Lowe, who's contested hard all day at centre-half forward, got his hands to it, and Nixon reading it beautifully off the pack, streamed in the goal and put his third through. Well, look at that. Seven goals, the difference. A terrific performance this by the Saints. As we see Alphonston down towards half-forward. Coughlin to lock it. Oh, great play by Sean White. Punch it away over the line. You know, Brownlow night last night, there was a bit of betting for Sean White to be a shock winner in the Brownlow. Instead of that, Lockett won it. Now they're on each other. It's a really top contest. It really is too. And uh, White doing all right at the moment. Well, there's Cork Amelis was grabbed when he didn't have it. Play on, said the umpire. They're still battling away. Tony Campbell picks it up. Oh, smothered that hand pass. Winmar goes in after it now. Melbourne players desperately trying to get it out of the bench. Oh, kicked into the face of the St Kilda player, Bob Jones. Here he is, Ricky Nixon, for goal number four. Yes! Well, he gets a standing ovation there. Nixon, but the good play came from Bob Jones. St Kilda added a behind before three-quarter time and led by 49 points at the last change after six goals to one in the third quarter. Could they keep it going in the last quarter or could the league leaders come back? We'll find out. Here are the highlights. Campbell off the ground. Tees off. Steins did well to get clear. Hand pass missed Jackson though, but he's got the pace, Ricky Jackson. Off the left boot. A chance here for Melbourne. Johnson in front, 30 metres out, and he has kicked it. A left foot, he hooks it back at Dahl. Will it bounce through? Oh, it's still in play. Gotch picks it up. Hooks and goals. Gary Lyon, well trapped, hooks it back towards full forward though. Oh, Muller ran too hard at the ball. Brian Wilson over the back into the open goal and he's put it through. Balance and evenness. There's Kenny Sheldon again. He lost it. Grabbed by Brian Wilson to Williams. Can Wilson kick another one? Chance for his third as he stabs it low and he puts it through. Grant to Jeffrey. He runs away without it. Here's Brian Wilson again trying to tunnel ball it. He does the level. Sean White to Ricky Jackson. It could be another goal coming up. The little fella sprints in and puts it through. Centering. Wilson almost. Off the ground by Gotch. He goes back to Muller. His kick is smothered. It spills luckily for White. He stabs it to Johnson. Oh, he's bobbled it. But he'll still kick the goal. There was nobody there to put pressure on. 
Well, Melbourne did outscore St Kilda five goals to two in the last quarter, but the Saints ran out winners by 28 points in front of a crowd of 21,334. Sounded like about 40,000. Lockett kicked seven, Nixon got four, three in that third quarter. Gotch and Winmar each kicked two, and for Melbourne, Wilson kicked three, Lyon, Jackson and Johnson each kicked two goals. So the Saints with two successive wins and they play Hawthorne at the MCG next week. We'll be back after the break with footy flashbacks. When you look around Victoria at the start of every day, you'll find someone there. They've done a terrific job, good as new. When I think of what it looked like after the fire, maybe we should think about changing to SIO. Take it from me, they're okay. With SIO Home Insurance, it costs only $158 to insure this $60,000 house. All new Nissan Patrol, the most advanced four-wheel drive down under. It makes all other four-wheel drives seem primitive. With Go Anywhere Patrol's all-new four-coil suspension, you get the handling and ride comfort of the car. Patrol's powerful 4.2-litre diesel or petrol sixes leave all other four-wheel drives back in the stone age. All-new Patrol. Already it's Australia's 4x4 of the year. That's Nissan know-how, building the right vehicles for Australia. If you need a cleaning service, do what I do. Here's the Melbourne Big. It's much faster. The Melbourne Big. The buying guide Melbourne is turning to. Need to organise a conference room or seminar? Welcome to this year's conference. Will all delegates please take their seats as the first session starts in five minutes. Put it on diners. These cricket uh, thingies are used for all sorts of things, but mainly for lighting uh, whatchamacallers we can't show here. Oh, well, at least you've seen the light. Cricket um, thingies. Sunday night. Don't you just love being scared? Ghoulies and girls. Things that scare you the most come out to play in the classic Disney way. Fun and games you won't want to miss. 6.30 Sunday, DTV Monster Hits on 7. Here are tonight's Tax 2 results, just drawn under government supervision. Hope you're enjoying the action in Saturday Night Replay. Still to come, the highlights of Collingwood and North Melbourne. And no doubt all those St Kilda fans will be knocking the top off another one at the moment after their great win today at Moorabbin. Let's take a look at some of the highlights in Round 9 over the years. Footy flashbacks are proudly brought to you by NEC Computers, Communications and Home Entertainment.
That's a great goal. Footy flashbacks were proudly brought to you by NEC Computers, Communications and Home Entertainment. Great to see some of those old highlights. Well, the action from VFL Park coming up shortly. We'll be back after this break. Sure is nice, mid-size comfort, small car price. Nissan Pulsar Vector. Power steering 1.8, fuel injected 1.8, four-wheel discs luxury. Nissan's two-year warranty. Like I said, sure is nice, mid-size comfort, small car price. Nissan Pulsar Vector. Full of great ideas. Another to go to an island. Keep a pineapple on the low day. Gotta have some fun. A taste of tropical sun. Cook the kind of special way. Our new burger is so nice. With a great pineapple slice. Oh, yes. You've come to be right, yes. The new pineapple and bacon chicken fillet burger. Cooked with the unique taste of 11 herbs and spices. A great new taste from... New Ducky Fried Chicken. Special taste you can. If you're earning peanuts on your investment, it's time to compare. Most banks only pay a low rate of interest for one month. Wouldn't you like to earn some real money? Pyramid Building Society will pay you a giant 13% interest for terms of one month or more. You choose the term. Pyramid, just letting you know. Whiskers time, whiskers time, is the time we love the best. We're really good mates. Nelson lets me know when he wants his whiskers, and I see to it that he always has it. He's particularly fond of the handy cans, and he gets all the variety he wants from whiskers. Whiskers time, there's no better time, eh buddy? Whiskers time, is the time we love the best. Baby Bell, the well-rounded cheese you'll have a ball with. When you fly to New York, there's always the chance you'll get stranded. Unless, of course, you fly Continental Airlines. That's because only Continental has the same plane one-stop service to the Big Apple. We guarantee you won't miss your connecting flight because the plane you depart on is the same plane you arrive on in New York. Now to the game between Collingwood and North Melbourne at VFL Park. When they played there last year, North were heading for the finals and the Magpies were near the bottom. The game went as expected, except Collingwood managed a pathetic two goals for the day. Well, this year, Collingwood were fourth and North tenth, so things had certainly turned around. But despite ladder positions, it promised to be a great game on the Kangaroos' recent form. Two wins and then a last quarter comeback last week against the Premiers, which nearly snatched victory. We'll take a look at the highlights of the first half and we join commentators Sandy Roberts, Ian Robertson and Malcolm Blight. Transfers play towards centre half forward. Marking contest. No one can take the mark, but Dennis Banks first to recover. Shot for goal by Banks. Wide into the pocket. What a great mark taken there by Ross Smith for North Melbourne in the back pocket. Smith with a torpedo punt. It's a game of defences at the moment from one half back line to the other. Club. Plays on quickly, gets it across to Mullane. He goes towards Barwick. He's got a chance to run if he wants to. No, he centres it. Out comes Taylor from behind. Can't take the mark. Will he recover? Yes, he does. Needs support. Gets it in Tony Shaw. Shaw fires a goal and kicks the first one for the Magpies. Good play now for North Melbourne. Up towards centre wing. A high flyer. Couldn't mark was Clarkson, but his tap on was good. Turner. Cloak. Cracker. Jim Cracker, kick off the ground by Clarkson. The ball at centre half forward for North Melbourne. Phil, skill. Phil with 
with skill. A set a half forward, short kick, and he finds... No, he's not allowed to play on. Good concentration by Phil Cracker. Drop punt kick. Perfect for accuracy and perfect for distance, a goal to North. One point the difference here at VFL Park and a chance for North through Jim Cracker to go into attack again, down towards the left half forward line. Pressure now on Turner of Collingwood. This uh, defence of Collingwood has been standing up pretty well. McGuan doesn't let them down, he spears in a low pass to David Cloak, who's had a fine start to this match. Cloak wide to Mullane. Those two have dominated early. Short again. And we're going the long way home. This is Hawk. Hugging the boundary line. Towards Banks. No pressure on him. To right. A kick under pressure. Taylor and Martin. Taylor use of the body will play on and goal. He does. Gafer's kick into the centre. Cloak. Playing well. Hand pass off. Kerrison in the centre. Thumping kick by Kerrison into the pocket. Right. McEwen. Oh, a little bit too wide for Barwick. He may be able to recover. Barwick again a chance. Hand pass Banks. Over the top McKeon. Outside 50 metres to the front of the square. At the back, Taylor. Yes, if you don't find Brian Taylor has taken the mark. 25 metres out directly in front. Taylor, directly in front. Kick for goal is good. Collingwood 3-8. North Melbourne 1-5. The Pies by 15 points. A great struggle developing down there between Martin and Taylor. Just under 10 minutes remaining as Francisco and Law do battle again. Here's a chance for Banks if he's free. He is free. He shoots a goal and he puts it through. Clarkson on centre wing, handball over the top, German runs up towards half forward and kicks inside the 50 metre line, ball at the back, Gaifer, good smother Arsiri, Gaifer over the line, Deliberate. deliberately, he's only about 20 metres from goal, but very, very deep in the pocket, he runs around, kicks the ball through the goal for a goal to North. It was a low-scoring first half which produced just six goals. Collingwood got the jump and led by 11 points at quarter time and extended the lead to 14 points at half time. We pick up the action in the third quarter with 15 minutes remaining and North have narrowed the margin to seven points. Some heavy rain at half time and it was even difficult in the first half. McDonald gets the tap out. Wide, Spargo held, but he didn't have it by Mullane. Mullane saying that he didn't try to move it on. But the umpire stands his ground, and the free kick will go back to Paul Spargo. Spargo into the pocket. Little bit of indirect play. Phil Cracker deep. Tony Shaw. Flip through the legs. Kerrison, good play. Up towards the wing area. Hawk, punch away by Buckley. Great gather, Barwick can't break clear. North Melbourne struggling hard, Larkin on the bottom of the pack, Ryan's a chance, dispossessed, Hawke trying to crash his way through, Larkin again, D uh, Darren Harris, Turner out the back to Hawke, Hawke's quick kick to half forward, ball now in the clear, Tottenham a chance if it can bounce for him, he gets the kick away, it's very close to the line, the mark safely taken by John Law, just inside the 50 metre line, Johnny Law. The vice-captain for the Kangaroos, up towards the wing, punch away. Nearly a gather by Spargo, this time it is, and he slips the tackle. Kick up towards the wing, ball runs free, it bounces nicely for Krasiska. Handball over the top, puts Barwick under enormous pressure. Back to Krasiska, breaks the tackle well. Handball into the centre, Turner, a little bit wide for Barwick, puts him under enormous pressure. Good gather, Matthew Ryan, towards full forward, right can't mark. North Melbourne defence under pressure. Tottenham clear. Unselfish leader right into an open goal. Goal to Collingwood. First goal to Graham Wright. And Collingwood just give themselves a little bit of breathing space. They lead by 13 points. Yes, they've certainly put the pressure back onto North Melbourne now after North Melbourne have got the first goal of this quarter. And it was really just sheer persistence. And, and Tottenham did well there to get it across to, to Wright. 
And Wright was really one of probably the instigator early with that great contest with Ross Smith and kept the ball in the forward line. plays 38 Collingwood steadying with a goal from right just over 30 and a half minutes remaining in this all-important third quarter still no one able to get a clear breakaway however Krasiska can't take it Turner can a hurried kick how's the bounce favorable Tottenham wider Shaw cloak under pressure Law is with him he bottles it up and bottles it up well I'd like to see that North Melbourne half forward line just religiously play in front. That's twice Krasiska has sent the ball Collingwood's way. There's the bounce. Cloak beaten by McDonald. It's going to be a free kick to Collingwood, however. It will be taken, I think, by Hawke. Again, Martin um, really does just get that bit far in front sometimes. I know the kick was pretty good and Taylor was in the right spot, but it does tend to play from behind a bit. Has done today, Taylor, but it's been the right thing with Martin playing so far in front. 35 metres out. A very steady approach. He fires with a drop punt and puts through another one for Collingwood. Taylor has kicked his third. Crucial time now for North Melbourne as, as Conan would have really reacted to the opening of North Melbourne and, and Taylor with his third goal as Hawke in tight working hard and Martin just really not being able to recover from getting that far in front. by 19 points with 12 minutes remaining in the third quarter cloak chance for Robertson up towards half forward punch away Collingwood at the bottom of the pack Tuttenham must get a free kick that centre half forward Paul Tuttenham he's added a little bit of life since he came on in the second quarter to the Collingwood forward line short pass looking for Shaw Taylor Shaw at the back gathers Gets the hand pass away looking for Brown. He can't control it. And will have a boundary throw in about 65 metres around from the Collingwood goal. The Magpies lead by 19 points. Taylor, Martin, neither can take it. Taylor at the bottom. And we'll see the ball up. Collingwood in attack. Two quick goals. Taylor wins it. Robertson doing the pressurising. Comes away with it. He's quick. In towards full forward. No mark taken. Right is there. And it's shoveled over the line. Collingwood fans saying deliberate. The umpire will have nothing of that. So they've got long memories of Collingwood they people, haven't they? <laughs> Dennis Banks tried to cot on there too. <laughs> <laughs> Went back for the kick. 25 plays 44, critical stage of the match for both sides. Taylor and Martin. Taylor wins it. And it rolls over the line for one behind. 20 points is the margin. Ian, could you put that ball run over that point line like that? I was just thinking the same thing. In a tight match, these behinds are very, very crucial. He could have gone for it and headed it towards the behind post and perhaps could have gone out of bounds. Yes. Just, it, you know, most definitely. Every point critical. Martin back into play. Law and Barwick. The ball will beat them all over the line. And the throw will take place. Peter German. To throw in cloak banks who was holding his arm just a few moments ago shaw's kick high right oh, almost took it he's going to be free kicked anyway on the shoulder now he's got taylor and martin one out situation at full forward 
going to have to be quick. Crocker can't get there. Banks, as he tackled high, tried to get it out. Pressure now on North. Tony Shaw is underneath the football, and he marks inside 50. Could he kick the distance if he started next week, could he, Tony Shaw? He's going short. And that was the last goal of the quarter. Before three-quarter time, North Melbourne added two points to Collingwood's one, but the Magpies had kicked three goals to one in the third term to lead by 25 points at the last break. But it certainly wasn't safe yet, because remember last week, North Melbourne kicked seven goals in 12 minutes to convert a three-quarter time deficit of 50 points against Carlton to almost snatch the game. We'll be back after the break with the rest of the final term. The phone bill? I thought you were going to put that out of your cheque account. Well, there's no money left in it. Well, use the other one. No, I can't touch that for about another month. But it's your money, Ralph. Yes, but then the interest yeah, won't but it's get... still your money. When the state bank launched the state banking system, it put 400,000 Victorians back in control of their money. Well, let's pull some out of your interest-bearing deposit. If you're still out of control, come and see us. You've got to wait 90 days for that one. So what were you saying about your money? Nissan's May and June going for a song sale is on now, and your Nissan dealer has savings you can really sing about. Take a look at Nissan Skyline GX, the award-winning vehicle, now at a record-breaking price. For the highly tuned family, how does a mere $23,990 sound for the sensational Skyline silhouette? Be quick, because for May and June... Nobody has the know-how to do a better deal than your Nissan dealer. We subjected leading brands of VHS tapes to conditions of everyday use. Three out of four cameramen chose to record this event on Tracktop. Tracktop for the professional observer. These cricket uh, thingies are used for all sorts of things, but mainly for lighting uh, whatchamacallers we can't show here. Oh, well, at least you've seen the light. Cricket um, thingies. I'll take you to places that you've never been I'll show you the world I'll share in your dreams Cause I know the feelings that you're going through I'm an Australian like you Some people still think the ambulance service is free. It isn't. Non-members have to pay hundreds of dollars for one ride. $480? The only way to avoid these high charges is to be a member. Ring 6633666. It's only $32 for a family. Less for singles and pensioners who need cover. Ring 6633666 and you're covered. It's worth it for the peace of mind. Welcome back to Saturday Night Replay and we rejoin the action from VFL Park today in the final quarter. North Melbourne have added a goal and the margin is just 20 points so the challenge is right on as we pick up the game with 16 and a half minutes remaining. Just over 16 minutes remaining, Martin will kick the ball in for North Melbourne in short and he finds McDonald. McDonald between fullback and centre halfback plays on. Slips off the side of his boot, out towards Law and Barwick. Barwick does the punching. Spargo, good roving. Larkin in support. McCarthy slips. He's got Buckley in support. North Melbourne mounting something. Out wide, German. Brown a little bit late on the scene. German in the centre. Phil Cracker on his own between the centre and centre half forward. Short passes on again. Jimmy Cracker. 
Marks on the 50 metre line. Too far out to score. Tries the torpedo. Doesn't quite come off to the front. Oh! Of the Joel Smith! Can't mark. Hawk. Defends grandly. Out towards the boundary line. Brown's done well to keep the ball in. Over the top, but one. Maguan, oh, great play. In towards half-back. Now he thumps Collingwood out of trouble. Up towards the centre. Good play, McCarthy. Bangs it forward again. Cloak. Off to Tuttenham. Tuttenham goes out wide to wing. Out of side. Wright. Looking dangerous is Graham Wright. Half-forward flank. Goes long. Touched off the boot, was it? Taylor. McEwen. Off the ground. McEwen. Is it a goal? behind there, Collingwood perhaps have just a little bit too high off McEwen's leg. Well, it missed, went the wrong side of the goalpost anyhow, so there's no decision on that, Ian. It'll go down as one rushed behind. Still, Barwick, Mullane in the pocket, centres it beautifully, Ryan, goal! <laughs> Collingwood answer the challenge. Listen, the game has been like that all day, hasn't it? You've seen North Melbourne with numerous opportunities up forward. <laughs> And Collingwood break away again as Darren Steele tried to knock that on. Barwick clever over the top and Mullane getting back into the game now with Spargo going back into the centre. And that kick of Matthew Ryan's was very similar to the one he had against Hawthorne a few weeks ago. Back in the centre once again. 27 points the margin. Is it going to be too much now? The North in just under 15 minutes. They must get the next goal and get it quickly. McRae throws up the back door. Spargo goes wide at a cracker. He goes long down towards Brother Jim. At the back is Tony Shaw. Plays on to the ever-reliable Morwood. Short into the pocket. It'll be a free quick, free kick as McGuan may have to take it. I would suggest Paul Hawks just hurt his shoulder there. Darren Crocker hit the ball in his arms at the same time. And uh, Darren Crocker's got a bit of a sore <laughs> arm too. I, as well, we, let's have another look at it, Malcolm. And as see we go, we he, he's done the right thing, Crocker. He's really has tried to hit the ball. And see how he's just pulled Hawks' arm in the follow-through of the punch. Uh, pretty well done by both players then, I thought. He's wrenched the right arm back. McGuan will take the kick. From half-back, looking for Cloak, with him is Harris. Ryan will see it over the line with German and Buckley. And uh, specialist just popping over to have a look at that arm. But he's still in a little bit of uh, discomfort. Ryan out the back door, but straight to Spargo. Across the centre, towards half-forward. Tutting him up high, couldn't take the mark. Kerrison waiting down. They got trouble here because Barwick's loose to half forward. Out comes Taylor. Has it now as claim. Been a great duel with Martin today. McEwen farms it out. Robertson in front of Barwick. Bought. Real desperation going on at the moment. Look at them. Stack upon each other. Robertson did well there. He was out number four or five to one, and to keep the ball in, he assessed it quite nicely. 27 points, Collingwood's lead. Just under 13 minutes remaining. It's deep in there, forward pocket. Chance for Mullane. Came straight at him, the steal. But the ball's over for a boundary throw in. Mullane with uh, 21 possessions. Been a very good player for his side. Donald McDonald doing the ruck work for North Melbourne. Dennis Banks there for Collingwood. McDonald over the top. Good gather by Mullane. Outside 50 metres. Hooks it back into the pocket. Spargo there. Taylor late on the scene. The rain absolutely pouring down at Waverley. And we'll have 
another boundary throw in as Paul Spargo picks him up, self up and tidies himself down. 27 points, Collingwood's lead. Taylor and Martin jostling over the back. Chance now for German. Over the top to Phil Cracker. Phil Cracker wide. No one really to kick it to, so he goes for safety. Larkin and McGuan. Larkin keeps his footing, and what an advantage it is. Great play, Larkin. Composed back to Phil Cracker. Into centre half back, and Buckley takes the mark for North Melbourne. Always looking for someone to give it to. He kicks it high into the centre. Clarkson can't mark. Jamie Turner. Punch on in the centre of the ground. A scramble for possession. Barwick's there and steal for North Melbourne. No one can really break away with the football and the umpire will come in and ball it up. Well, are they keen, those girls, with the brolly up and the rain pouring down? Gee, how dark is it? It's uh, almost to turn the lights on in. Yes, yeah, suddenly it has become very, very dark. This low crowd, low cloud covering the stand. But Barwick's clear this time. Set sail for goal in towards Taylor. Can't take it. Right was held. He'll sock it through another one. Or is he going to give him another kick? He won't need it. It's all clear. The new 1.8 Nissan XR. Is it a Targa? Is it a coupe? Or is it a cabrio? Absolutely. The new 1.8 Nissan XR. It's out of the ordinary and out of sight. Nissan Malau, building the right cars for Australia. Guess who didn't check the footy fixtures in the Melbourne Big? The buying guide with useful information pages. Northern Electronics, professionals in quality hi-fi. Double double your sound with a second pair of quality loudspeakers free. This week, purchase any hi-fi system on floor display and Northern Electronics will give you an extra pair of quality high fidelity loudspeakers absolutely free. An exclusive Northern Electronics speaker offer. Double double your sound with a second pair of quality loudspeakers free. Only at Northern Electronics, 146 Gaffney Street, Coburg and 246 Burke Street, City. For about the price of the small runarounds our competitors are offering, this month's budget can do a family-sized Holden Commodore. Only $55 a day, including insurance. This funny-looking duck does a very serious job. Toilet duck is uniquely designed to kill germs right up under the rim, where toilet brushes can't reach. Then it cleans all the way down. Toilet duck leaves your bathroom so clean and fresh. So fresh, it invites a little visit. Toilet duck cleans and kills germs where brushes can't reach. Long ago in Switzerland. Your chocolate, madam. Today, I'd like to drink it, James. Hot. But there's no such thing as hot drinking chocolate, madam. Well, go and invent it. I call it Alpen Blend, madam. Where are you going? Into business, madam. Alpen Blend from Nestles, the finest chocolate you can drink. We move on a bit in the last quarter and pick it up with four and a half minutes to go. Over four minutes remaining, and this will turn to be a good victory for Collingwood in trying conditions. And we throw in outside 50 metres. Malane gathers, can't break clear. Banks. Tries a little flip out the back. Robertson just not quite in the right position for that manoeuvre and will have a boundary throw in. 33 points Collingwood lead by. Very close to siren time. McDonald gets the tap out. Chance for Brown. Back to Mullane. Can't quite make an effective hand pass. Bill Cracker. Banks gathers 50 metres out. Long shot by Banks, just offline. Through for another behind to Collingwood. Martin and Taylor there, 
just it's actually butted up pretty well young Martin from early I, you know it looked as though Taylor was going to have a real big day and it's been a pretty good contest all day and uh, I don't quite mean this sort of stuff as the contest. You think they might have been asking each other what they were doing later? <laughs> I don't think so, somehow. Well, it's still going on. There are players now coming from everywhere. We've got two separate groups. But they need a bit of self-discipline now because Collingwood can't lose the match, but they well, the certainly lose players. The last thing you want is a report with about three minutes to go. talking to a number of players. I haven't seen any books come out as yet. And Taylor's played so much football. Come on, Ryan Taylor. Well, that's really all he had to do from the whole start of that. Just point to the scoreboard. Score. I always found that a complete waste of energy. You know, I mean... plays 9.15. Winners can laugh, I suppose, Ian. Well, there's uh, Mick Gaifer. He's not laughing, but he will be happy with the fact that his side are going to get four premiership points. Three and a half minutes remaining. Cloak does well. Taps it wide. And it goes over the line. Been an impressive return to senior ranks by him today, Ian. Tremendous by David Cloak. Throw in again. Again close to the boundary line. Clarkson looking for the free kick. And I think he's going to get it. The Collingwood runner, I think he's been on the ground for quite some time, and I'm sure he's helping Brian Tutter through this period. Clarkson. Short. Smith to half forward. Be a free kick to Krasiska. A little bit of pushing going on. He centres it into the middle and Turner. Collingwood realising they've got this game parcelled up. Taylor offers him a lead. He's going to have to come out a long way. No mark taken. At the back, Christian. Is he going to go? kicks his first and he'll be relishing the move into the attacking zone and still they're carrying on down in the forward line so watch the replay and Christian really standing behind and uh, it's a pretty good snap really as the North Melbourne player came in at him well, 15 to 411. I wonder if it would be a good idea if perhaps one of those players was removed by their coach at this stage with just a couple of minutes remaining. There's still plenty of niggling going on down in that uh, forward zone. I think Brian Taylor can have the last laugh by saying you've only got to look at the scoreboard, but one gets the impression he's saying a little more than that. Centre bounce. Collingwood home and hosed. Smith tumbling a punt towards North's half forward zone. Turner, a hurried kick, gathers little distance. Picked up by Spargo. Goes towards the 50 metre line. Close to the boundary line. German will swing back if he can. Trying to centre it. He does so, but it's all Collingwood. Tuttenham in front. Tuttenham. Wide hand. to Collingwood by that North Melbourne defence. And once again, that defence of Collingwood sensational. And really, they've, they've been fantastic all day. They really have run the ball out there with some sort of commitment that North Melbourne haven't been able to counter. Martin kicks the ball back into the members' half-back area. Mullane, good punch on Harris. Good shepherd gives Robertson a chance. Mullane, hard up against the boundary line. Left foot kick to the front of the square. Taylor can't mark. 
Wright might kick another goal. Across the face. Through from behind. Graham Wright has kicked three goals. Brian Taylor has kicked three. And Philip Cracker has kicked two for North Melbourne. Well, the defence you mentioned, they've restricted North Melbourne to just four goals. And that's a top effort in a game of footy. Just one minute remaining. Martin to the outer side. Looking for McDonald. McDonald in front takes the mark. Right doing the chasing, but McDonald gets his kick away into the centre. And there's that man, the mountain of a man, David Cloak. Conditions perfect for his return. And he's led from the front. Enormous kick to the front of the goals. No mark taken. Buckley there for North Melbourne. Shocking kick out on the full. And that epitomises North Melbourne's effort. Particularly since the rain came down heavily at half time. The free kick to be taken by Barwick. Into full forward. Taylor. Bustles Martin out and takes the mark 25 metres out. And there is uh, Peter Dacos who was a withdrawal late withdrawal from this team but the action is with Brian Taylor he's got the chance to make it four for the day as the siren sounds Taylor kicks for goal and has kicked it The Magpies won every quarter and finished up winning by 20, uh, 48 points and restricting North to just four goals, an important percentage booster. Taylor four, Wright three goals, Phil Cracker got two for North Melbourne. Well, we'll be back just after the break with Scott Palmer and highlights of other games. Monday on a country practice. What do you reckon? I reckon it sounds all right. A one-night stand turns into one long nightmare. Where have you been all night? When an unfaithful husband spends the night with a lonely girl. I want to see you. We have to sort some things out. No one can imagine the frightening outcome. Where's Becky? Out in the brand. No, she's not. The betrayed wife, the guilty husband, the innocent child, all fall victim to the lonely girl. You're mine now, Jeff. A country practice, 7.30, Monday and Tuesday on 7. You saw it first on the grid at Adelaide. Now the exciting Nissan Pulsar Vector Triple S is at your Nissan dealers, ready for you to drive. Nissan Pulsar Vector Triple S, S, S. Performance that will make you glad to be behind the wheel. Style that tells you this one's special. Nissan Pulsar Vector Triple S, S, S. Not your normal kind of sedan. Nissan know-how. Building the right cars for Australia. Seven hot dinners every single week. It's hard to keep them happy. Just listen. What a cheek. Bored with beef. Cheese stuff with chicken. Fed up with fish. OK, I got the message. Enough of all this talk. Pep up, everybody. Tonight I'm serving pork. Put new-fashioned pork on your weekly menu. It's trimmed to fat, packed with protein and simple to prepare. Pep them up with pork. We're the best down under Holden's, under Bewey's, under Ford's, under Rockies, under Rollers, under Alphas and the Cords. For the biggest range of tyres at the most competitive prices, you can't go past bow repairs. We got the wheels, every tyre that can be found. We won't be undersold, so ring bow repairs first for tyres, wheels, batteries and undercar service. Bow repairs, the best down under. If you're earning peanuts on your investment, it's time to compare. Most banks only pay a low rate of interest for one month. Wouldn't you like to earn some real money? Pyramid Building Society will pay you a giant 13% interest for terms of one month or more. You choose the term. Pyramid, just letting you know.
Say no to drink driving. Welcome back and still a lot to come. Let's take a look at some highlights of other matches. At Prince's Park today, the Hawks began in much the same way as they did against the Eagles last week. Eight players kicked goals in the opening term and even Chris Mew found time to come from defence and goal. At the other end, Bulldog spearhead Simon Beasley showed superb judgment to post Footscray's first goal at the 20-minute mark, but the visitors headed to the first change of ends 40 points in arrears. Jason Dunstall chalked up his half-century of goals in the second term, a feat which obviously delighted Hawks supporters. A couple of goals from Terry Wallace at least did something to spur Footscray on, and Simon Beasley was doing his best for the Scrays, but it was all to no avail. Dunstall again was providing Hawthorne with a valuable focal point up forward, having six goals before three-quarter time. The league's leading goal kicker booted another two in the final term to finish with eight for the match, as the Hawks marched to the top of the ladder with an 89-point victory. Down at Cadinia Park, the up-and-down Cats took on Fitzroy and the home team would have undoubtedly been delighted to welcome back the talents of Bill Brownless. He booted Geelong's opening three goals and was looking extremely dangerous. With Richard Osmond too in form, the Lions were still in touch at quarter time. And Osmond continued his good form in the second term. But Geelong posted five more goals before half-time to go to the break with a 36-point advantage. The Lions did their best to peek back the leeway in the third term, with Richard Osmond once again taking his tally to five. But Gary Ablett had notched up the same tally for Geelong. But Robert Scott was the man who was doing all the damage for Geelong. He was either providing opportunities for teammates or threading them through himself to give Geelong an unassailable lead at the last change. Yet again, Osmond was outstanding for the Lions in the final term. But anything he did, Gary Ablett was matching. Both players turned in eight goal performances, but in the end, it was victory to Geelong by 33 points. At the cricket ground, it was Richmond versus Sydney, and the Tigers started the match with a couple of quick goals to Jeff Hogg. But Sydney didn't take long to begin whittling away that advantage with goals like this 70-metre effort from Mark Bays. While Bernard Tui and Peter Wilson seemed to be unable to agree about something, Jeff Hogg got his third for the term with a freak effort, but the Swans still had the lead. Michael Pickering took Hogg's lead to soccer one through in the second quarter, and the Tigers moved closer. But a four-goal burst in only six minutes put the Swans back in the van, and they led by 29 points at the long break. The third quarter was the decider with Sydney keeping Richmond goalless and converting brilliantly on occasions like this effort from David Murphy. Finally, the Tigers' agony was ended as they crashed to a 63-point loss while Sydney fans were satisfied with a much better performance. Today's game is a part of the Elders' IXL 1988 VFL Premiership season. And now we welcome, live in the studio, the sporting editor of the Sunday Press, Scotty Palmer. Well, David Cloak, we saw then in the highlights, he came back today. And the gag came off tonight in the dressing rooms, Drew, but he didn't want to say anything. And it's surprising because he got nine kicks, 11 marks, 12 handballs and 12 hitouts and three stitches in the head, too, <laughs> he for a, a good measure. Yeah, but, a lot um, more injuries, too, at Collins. A lot more injuries, yes. The Hawk has a shoulder and gave a broken nose, but Lee Matthews very pleased with the, the way the side played in the wet. And I believe Damien Burke has a, an operation coming up. Well, Damien, they've got the Fingers crossed down at Geelong. He comes to Melbourne tomorrow morning for a, uh, an examination by John Grant, the specialist, to see if his knee's OK. It locked in the early uh, system today and uh, couldn't play on after the first quarter. So uh, we're just hoping that Damien is OK. But the ligaments, we don't know yet. How was John Devine's demeanour? John Devine, he was absolutely uh, livid with the press. He said, I don't know what's wrong with you blokes. He said, leave us alone. He said, I know what's wrong with uh, Geelong, but I'm not going to tell you blokes, he said. <laughs> he said, if someone coughs down here at Cadenia Park, it's headlines. Just leave the cats alone. Now, Scotty, I was down at Moorabbin. Wow, Jones played a great game, but he came off late in the, late in the piece. Yes, and it's unfortunate because uh, x-rays will be taken tonight or tomorrow morning to determine whether he's got a uh, broken bone in the forearm. Okay. If he has, it's going to be uh, bad luck for the Saints, who are coming good. And Wow's played a wonderful game in the ruck in two weeks. And the Saints have won two in a row. How was Doc Baldock? 
we can make the five, he said. He said, everyone rubbish us after we went to Perth, but he said, uh, I thought it was a turning point for the club. He said, uh, in the second half, we played well and we're on uh, target for the five. Now, you went to the MCG. Tommy Hafey actually mixed with the opposition. He did. He was very uh, praiseworthy of his own players, the school players, Williams and Healy and Mitchell in the centre that got the ball flowing. But then he was sympathetic towards the old Tigers who he coached for so many years. He said, how many people were there? And we said 11,000. He said, there should be more people going to see Richmond. And actually, he went in afterwards and had a cup of tea with all the Tiger trainers and Kevin Bartlett. And his old mate, KB. And his old mate. <laughs> Good on you, Scotty. Okay, Thanks very Drew. much for coming in. We'll see you in Sports World in the morning. Thanks very much. Just before we close, let's take a look at the league ladder as it stands with still one match to play in round nine and a few changes. Melbourne have slipped back to third. Collingwood improved their percentage. The Hawks are on top and a reminder that tomorrow in Perth, the Eagles play Carlton and you can see it live here on the Seven Network from two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Hope you've enjoyed the replay tonight. Good night. When they wrote the story, who was there in the colours of glory? When a new star rose Who was there As each chapter closed We were there When the mighty fell We were there When they did it well Who was there When the boys became the men We were there And we'll be there again We'll be there this year We'll be there VFL Premiership Football, proudly brought to you by Nissan Australia, Carlton and United Breweries, your state insurance office and State Bank Victoria. Limitless void of outer space. Six